Hey y'all, uh, welcome to today's uh, video on partial products. Uh, if we break that apart right away, before I even talking about what it is, we can use our vocabulary. Partial really refers to a part. And products, products are the answers to multiplication problems. So we're gonna be thinking about like, how do we find the answers in multiplication by taking parts of things, like doing it in small steps. And that's actually, really great. This is one of my favorite methods out there, partial products. I find it very handy um, and it's a good way to approach our multiplication. So let's go ahead and dive in. Let me kind of model what we're thinking about today. I'm going to start with a two by one number. So let's say 38 times, so I don't know, six, right? All right, so 38 times six comes along. Okay. So when we're doing partial products, the first thing we want to do is we actually want to stack our numbers as an algorithm. Okay, so what I mean by that is I'm going to take 38 and 6, and I'm going to set it up as an algorithm like this. Okay, so that's where I've converted 38 times 6 to look like 38 times 6. Step 1, stack it, got it, check. 2, this is where we do the parts. Okay, and we're going to do this by place value. That's what's really important as we think about it. If I start here, right, I see I have a six. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna think about this six in the ones place and I'm gonna multiply it by the six that's in, or excuse me, the eight that's in the ones place, right? This is a lot like the area model where we expand things out and break them apart, right? This really just tells me I'm gonna find the answer to six times eight. So six times eight equals 48. And as I write that in, as you can see, right, and I'm actually gonna write it almost reverse. I'm gonna line things up in their place values, right? Six times eight is equal to 48. I have the eight in the ones place and I have my four in the tens place because that's exactly as it should be, okay? So I thought about that six. I multiplied it by the eight in the ones place. Now, let me change colors so this maybe makes a little more sense. Now I'm gonna take the six and I'm gonna multiply it by the three. But remember, it's not a three. It's a three in the tens place. So really it's a 30. And if I solve that, well, six times three is 18 and then one zero, so that's 180. Now I can just add my numbers together. This is 12, and there's my answer. 38 times 6 equals 228, right? So again, with this idea, I guess that was our last step we just added. We're really thinking about how to multiply each digit in each place value. And if we just write them down as number sentences, we'll already have our answers stacked up and we can add them. So of course, we're gonna keep playing with this, so don't worry. I think more practice is better. The more we see it, the more sense it will make. So let's uh, say I have 71 and I wanna multiply it by four, okay? So again, step one, we're gonna stack this up, okay? Now, I'm thinking ones place. I'm gonna multiply the digit in the ones place times the digit in the other one's place. So I'm gonna multiply the one or the four times the one, okay? And you could, a lot like I like to do with the area model, write all the problems down first, then solve. And maybe that's what I'll do this time. So first we're gonna do four times one, and then I'm gonna take my four, and I'm gonna multiply it by that seven. But remember, it's not just a seven, it's a seven in the tens place. So it's actually 70. Right, and then we just multiply to get our answers. So four times one is four, and then four times seven is 28, and then a zero, so that's 280, and I add. Boom, 71 times four is 284. So again, I'm multiplying each digit in its place value. I'm writing it down as it's what it equals. I'm adding them together. Okay, well then, let's say, for example, I have something like 534. Yes, a three-digit number. And I'm going to multiply that by um, the five. 
Okay. So same process. We're going to stack. Okay, then I'm gonna think about my one times my one. So that's five times four. Then I'm gonna think this one times this three, but it's not a three, it's a 30. Then I'm gonna think about this same one and I'm gonna multiply it by the five, but it's not just a five, it's a 500. And now we get those answers, we line them up, and we add. So five times four is 20. Again, notice I'm putting things in the right place value. That's going to help with my addition. Since it's a 20, there's a two in the tens place. Five times three is 15, and a zero makes 150. Uh, let's see, five times, ooh, sorry, five times five is 25, and two zeros would be what? 25 and two zeros. There we go, 2,500. Now we just add zero. Seven, six, two, there's my answer. 534 times five is gonna get me 2,670. So this is really what we're looking at with partial products is you're doing it one digit at a time, but you're doing it for each place value. Now, this is, I like this technique a lot when it's uh, something by one, two by one, three by one, heck even four by one. I could figure all that out. I could do that work. Partial products is also great with two by two, but it does get a little bit trickier, right? So let's take 28 and let's multiply that by 17. Okay, now we're gonna use partial products again. Again, this time I really wanna be thinking about all my digits being multiplied by each other, okay? From the different numbers that is. So step one, I'm going to stack 28 times 17. All right, now this is where we really have to keep track of our, our set steps, because first I'm going to start with this one. So that's a seven in the ones place times the eight in the ones place. Okay, again, I'm going to set up my problems and then I'll multiply. So I'm going to stick with my seven and I got to multiply it by the two, which is actually a two in the tens place. So that's a 20. Okay, so far so good. Now, I've taken my the seven and I multiplied it by both the digits upstairs. Now, I'm gonna take this one, which is actually a 10, because it's in the tens place, and I'm gonna multiply it by the number upstairs. So that's an eight, right? And I'm also going to multiply it times the two in the tens place, which is 20. So this is where, again, it's like keeping track of all the digits we have to multiply. We take both digits that are in the bottom number and multiply it by both digits that are in the upper number, okay? I don't need to multiply the digits that are in the same number, right? I'm not going to, and this is a common mistake people make, I'm not multiplying the one or the seven. Like, I don't need to multiply those together. They're in the same number. So there's no reason to do that, okay? So now let's just go ahead and solve all these and then we'll add. So seven times eight, um, let's see, seven times seven is 49. Uh, and then another seven is 56. Okay, seven times two is 14 and a zero. So that's 140. Oh, 80, good, that was a nice gift. Two times one is two and then two zeros. So that's 200. Now we add, so six, uh, let's see, five plus four is nine, nine plus eight is 17, two, three, four, and there we have it, 476. So again, as you can see, this is where partial products is great. It does get a little tricky with two by two numbers. So let's try another one. Let's do another two by two number. Uh, let's say 53 times, um, 46. Okay. Again, I just wrote it stacked right away so that we could get into the work. We're going to start in the ones place with the bottom number. And we're going to say this one times this one. So that's six times three. And then we're going to stay with the one. We're going to multiply it by the five, but it's not a five. It's a 50 because it's in the tens place. 
Again, this would be the same thing we did with area model where we had our rows and our columns. So I just want to make sure that that's clear what we're doing because again, this would be the same thing as my row of six times the column of 50 and my row of six times the column of three. Like notice that's the same step. This is just to eliminate drawing the model, okay? All right, so now that I've done that, I gotta take my four, so that's a 40. I'm gonna multiply it by the one, so that's four times three, and then I'm gonna multiply it by the five, so that's 40 times a five that's in the tens place, so it's really a 50. And now we just multiply these and then add them together. So six times three is 18. Six times five is 30 and one more zero is 300. Four times three is 12 and a zero. So that's 120. Four times, whoops, sorry. Four times five is 20 and then one, two zeros. So that's a 20 and then two zeros. So that's 2000. So we're gonna add this up. Boom. And there's our answer. 53 times 46 is going to get me 2,438. All right, so this is partial products. Again, we're just dabbling and in getting into this a little bit. So don't feel frustrated or defeated if this doesn't make sense. Uh, I would encourage that you continue to try to practice it. But like if the area model works for you, then, you know, like try partial products and then solve it using the area model and kind of compare your answers. And you'll see if you start getting the same answers, you'll feel more confident about using partial products. Um, again, we do like to use this because it's a little more efficient, right? Because then we don't have to draw the model. Um, and that's what we're always looking for in math is like efficiency. But, um, you know, I always say use the method that works best for you. But Let's practice this first before we make that decision. So as always, thank you for your wonderful work. Thank you for being here. And we will see you next time.